Today we are checking out something that's pretty special. Now we're also going to look at a couple other knives from this company because they have quite a bit of some pretty special knives and they also have some very very practical uh knives that are done extremely well this is from katsu and this is the king fisher it does come in a couple different versions so um, there's actually an even more premium version with timascus it looks gorgeous but this is a titanium handle mother of pearl inlays on both sides as you can see then we have a copper damascus blade and this is a locking folder now um, that that copper damascus is just beautiful um, it's a polished copper damascus so you can see the layers of copper um, it just you know it looks beautiful and you can see it all the way down to the pin because um, the lock is basically a back lock, but it is a very easy back lock. You just push this down and then it will close. So in order to open it, you can drag it around with your pointer finger and push down and click it in. Or, you know, you can do it with, you know, the traditional way with your thumb. But it just clicks right in just like that. And it, it, it's small, but, you know, I can get a full four finger grip. Not that this is a very practical knife, but... It, I mean, it locks up. It's locked. It's um, definitely got a nice edge on it. Uh, you can definitely use it, you know, as a little package opener or whatever if you want, you know, something super premium on your desk or whatever. Um, I love that you can see the copper Damascus on this arm. I think it looks beautiful. Um, you know, the whole thing is just very elegant and unique which is what i love about it you know there there's cop or sorry titanium liners but it has like this copper uh finish over it that makes it look you know a little bit like copper but this is all titanium and you know you can see the micro or not micro but the milling in the tail end right here that kind of makes it a little thin we have a flower that's machined out for the pivot you know this is more of an art knife but it still can be very practical for somebody who wants to carry uh, very elegant premium high-end knives now this one you know, like I said, is the more affordable one of the the batch because, like I said, there is a even more premium version. As far as the copper Damascus, I'm not 100%. I'll put it on the screen, the steel that they're using in the copper Damascus. Uh, they use a lot of ZDP-189. He treated between 65 and 67 HRC. Um, which is an incredible steel, but they also use a few other steels as well. So, you know, um, I'm not 100%. I'm reaching out to them, but I'm sure I have found out by now, and it's probably written on the screen. Um, gorgeous little piece, very lightweight, and, you know, it, it has a beautiful storage or packaging, um, and this actually has a sleeve that goes over the top of this. I will admit this sleeve is very difficult to put on and off. Um, I, I, it, I've struggled i almost tore it off because it's very very tightly fit uh the other ones are not as tight as that one but let me uh, let me show you a couple more so this is a couple katsus that do use the zdp one well this one uses zdp 189 damascus steel with a mirrored convex grind this is a great way to get a japanese style folding knife for an affordable price not made in japan but this is definitely a japanese style like a rockstead or something like that but far far more affordable than you're going to pay you know if you bought it from rockstead um full titanium frame lock insane action incredible front flipping action it is the primary opening so it is nice that it works so well uh beautiful grind too you know and it is very uh japanese traditional looking now this one is a the more affordable version of even this one and it has beautiful polished carbon fiber steel liners same deployment that works great but this one has 154 cm steel and has also a convex grind so the entire blade is going like this down to the edge and it does have a small edge bevel um it would be really cool if it was a zero grind but you know it does have basically a micro bevel on it it, but there's nothing wrong with that. The, basically, I think it's actually going to be possibly a little bit better for people because 
This one actually looks like a zero grind. It's damn near a zero grind, but it is uh, a very, very small micro bevel. But when you go to resharpen it, you know, obviously strop it, strop it, strop it, but eventually you're gonna have to resharpen it. And the only way to resharpen it, um, you know, as far as most people's standards or, or what's most people's ability is going to be to cut in an edge bevel. With these two, they do have some other new versions. I haven't tried them yet, but it's basically the same knife in Timascus. And then they have another one in a copper uh, carbon fiber. I think that one just looks absolutely beautiful. It's a gold camo carbon fiber. They also have a, a raw version that doesn't have the black wash on it. So they have a few different options of this model. There's even a G10 one that's even more affordable than this one not sure if it's available or anything like that but you know it does allow you to get you know this style of knife for a reasonable price considering what they they have the potential to cost with the exact same materials for an example this is about $1,100 right here. This is the Rockstead Higo. This is a ZDP 189. He treated to 67 HRC with a convex grind with a zero grind. So this one does not have a micro bevel. Now, you can see it is, this one's actually made in Japan. That's why it is so expensive. But you can see the design influence, how you know similar they are. But this one's a quarter of the price, or if not less, you know, depending on which version you get. This is the JT03 with S35VM blade steel. And it has, a, you know, kind of another front flipper, but this front flipper is actually pretty cool because you can roll it around. I mean, you could roll most front flippers around, but it's very easy to flick, slide finger, or reach over. You can do either one, very ergonomic, beautiful blade shape with this somewhat of a dow or sheep's foot blade, titanium frame lock with the fat carbon fiber inlays, um, titanium milled pocket clip, great access to the lock bar, super duper smooth. Again, you know, more of a, um, a, a Japanese style because the designer of Katsu, I believe is Japanese. Um, so a lot of the, the influence is, you know, obviously from him being from Japan or the designer at least um, I could be wrong about the owner but the the designer at the very least now this one uses ZDP 189 again and it is a sand Mai you can see there's a line right there and this one's in zirconium titanium and then the ZDP 189 and it comes with a ring that you can put right here it's very easy to take apart you just unscrew the clip right here this will pop out and you can pop the ring in and it's got a glass breaker on the back you know a little bit of traction back there um, so it makes it to where you can kind of turn it into a karambit where you have the karambit ring uh, but this one's also very very well done Great front flipping action. They do a great job with their front flippers. This one's a little big, so it might hit you if you uh, do the reach over, but the side finger's great. You can slow roll it around. Um, it's got a beautiful sheep's foot blade with great geometry. It comes with a super sharp edge. And ZDP 189, he treated to 66, 67 HRC, becomes an absolute super steel and takes insanely sharp edges uh being that it is somewhat of a simple steel um you know having it heat treated that high brings up incredible wear resistance but it also allows it to to be to take like in very 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 sharp fine edges um and and it does it does especially when it's heat treated this high katsu also has some pretty extreme stuff so this is basically a folding um, what is a scythe or, or a folding sickle, which does have a crossbar lock, which crossbar locks are known for being strong. I wish this one came with the stop or with an extra pin like this one does. This one does come with a pin right here that you can take out. It's a glass breaker, but it also unscrews and then you can put it right up here 
so that this thing can't fold, so it can't close on you. So if you are going to use it like a hatchet for hard use or anything, you're not gonna have to worry about it closing on you. It also uses a crossbar lock, um, which is a strong locking system, very easy to push forward. Now this one, like I said, you know, it doesn't have that secondary lock but I wish it did. Uh, but as long as you're cutting downward the way you're supposed to, where you spike the tip into things this way, it'll work just fine. You just don't wanna hit the spine of it and put all the pressure towards the lock. You wanna put the pressure towards the stop pin when you do swing it and chop it into things. But it is pretty damn cool. Um, it's not something you see every day which you know is pretty awesome. This one's in, I believe, um, oh, this one's D2, and then this one's SLD Magic, I believe. Yes, SLD Magic Steel. So we have D2 and SLD Magic. This one has shred carbon fiber handles. They do have a G10 version, and then this one's G10. But it's damn cool, and I can technically reverse flick it, um, or uh, thumb flick it, but you know it's obviously not meant for that. It's just easy just to swing it out, just like that, give it some momentum and it will fly out. But very, very cool. You know, like I said, you know, they, they do some very interesting stuff and everything Katsu does is usually, well, I would say all, I don't think I've held anything that hasn't been very good quality. This was just a quick look at some of their folding options, folding knife, folding tool options. Now they do have a lot more stuff like fixed blades that I did not show that are actually really cool. I do have full length videos on them, but I have everything linked down in the description from Katsu. So check out the links in the description. Work hard, stay tough. Until next time, peace.